Since the implementation of the 0.1% sulfur content in fuels within the ECA areas, owners have had to adapt the way they operate vessels operating into these ECA areas. Now, some owners have actually gone to the point of setting up sort of squads of chief engineers and superintendents who have gone out to the ships within their fleet and looked at setting up onboard procedures for fuel switching when entering these zones. This has enabled the owners to sort of prevent major issues coming about when the ship is switching fuel as it enters, enters the eco zone. Other adaptions to the ship as well have included splitting the fuel tanks to be able to take the lower sulfur content fuel um, and also other things as well such as um, the heating of the, the fuel itself because the, the operational uh, temperature of the fuels are different depending on where the ship will be operating. Some owners have decided to take alternatives Pretty much vessels which are operating continuously within ECAS, it becomes a bit more uh, cost effective to perhaps retrofit a scrubber or even go to the LNG fuel route or even methanol which has been also trialled by Stena Line up in the Baltic itself. The scrubbers have continued to be retrofitted, seem to be the more preferred option. However, we have been seeing a lot of take up in the LNG side. Most significantly, Carnival's order of four very large cruise ships, which will be operating from 2018 and 2019 onwards. These vessels will be built in Finland and in Germany. We've also seen conversions to LNG as well taking place. Um, one Scandinavian owner is just taking delivery now from the shipyard of a vessel that's been converted from uh, diesel electric across to operating on LNG. Over in North America, we've got Tote, who are about to uh, go through a very large uh, LNG conversion on their railroads, which operate to Alaska. What the cruise industry has given us we can start to see happening in other ship sectors such as the tramp sections of the bulk and tanker market which would give that fleet greater flexibility in the charter market but also in the container ship market where the ships are on a fixed uh, operation. Now we've already seen UASC who are currently going through a fleet renewal with large vessels that are capable of being easily adapted to operate on LNG fuel. What we'll probably see are those vessels as well as similar vessels which are at the moment could be retrofitted to take on LNG as the bunker stations become to be operational around the world and so allowing for LNG to be used uh, more commonly as we see with typical diesel fuel at the moment.